We pray that the Spirit of God, the word, the Spirit of God will breathe upon this word and we will profit with it in the name of Jesus. The word of God will profit us. We thank you, Abba Father. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. We've been looking at a very awesome topic in morning showers. And my husband had been taking us through the names of God. This morning, we'll be looking at two of my very, very favorite names of God. And that's why I'm just smiling because it resonates deeply. You know, we said the names of God are a revelation of his person. So when God reveals himself to you by a particular name, it's because he's showing you that it, this is who I am. This is my person. This is my, this is my nature. This is what I am able to do. This is what I'm capable of doing. And this is what I want to do. Not just that I'm capable of doing, it is what I want to do in your life. And this is what I've even done because everything has been made available for us. The scripture says in Ephesians 1, 3, it said we've been blessed with all blessings, all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. So God has done everything for us. A revelation of himself, a revelation of his name is just for us to key in into what he has done. Is to key in into all of his blessings, all of the things that have been available for us as his children. Hallelujah. So this morning we'll be looking at the one beautiful name of God. We'll be looking at Jehovah el Rohi. The God who sees. I like to personalize it. I say the God who sees me. The God who sees Kemi. The God who sees. I want to know that you're not just a face in the crowd. You're not just one of the 7.8 billion people on earth. You are important to God. And it's personal with you. He sees you. He sees where you are. He sees all that is going on. He sees. He's not a God that also has eyes to see. The person that created the eyes will he not see. He sees. Hallelujah. Let's look into the Bible. You know, in Genesis chapter 16, interestingly, it was Hagar that called God by this name. It was Hagar the Hagar that the Lord revealed himself to by this beautiful name. We remember Hagar in the Bible was Sarah's maid. And when she found out she was pregnant for Abraham, she began to despise her mistress. She was rude. She was disrespectful. And she was sent packing. She fled into the wilderness. But the scripture says in verse 7, now the angel of the Lord found her by a spring of water in the wilderness and by the spring of the way on the way to shore. The angel of the Lord found her. And the Lord gave her beautiful promises. The Lord spoke to her. The Lord comforted her. And in verse 16, she said, look at what she said. In verse 13, then she came to, she called the name of the Lord who spoke to her. You are the God who sees. For she said, here I also have seen the one who sees me. I have seen the one who sees me. The God saw her. The Lord paid attention to her. This morning, I've come to tell you that wherever you are, whatever level you are, are you celebrating? Are you happy? Are you excited? The Lord is there with you. The Lord sees you. Are you down and out? You know, a lot of times stuff happen and you feel God has forgotten. God is not seeing me. And we begin to pray religious prayers like, God, where are you? Lord, where are your eyes? Lord, do not leave me. Lord, do not force. He has never left. He will never leave. Guess what he said? He said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. When Jesus was going, he told himself, he said, Lord, I am with you always. He doesn't go on vacation. He said, no, I am with you always, even till the end of age. That is a God we serve. That is Jehovah El Rohi, the one who sees. He doesn't go on vacation. He doesn't sleep. He doesn't slumber. And that's why the scripture says in Psalm 121, he said, he who watches over me does not sleep, does not slumber. Let's go to that scripture. Hallelujah. The Lord does not go on vacation. The Lord does not sleep. The Lord does not slumber. He is forever on duty. Wow. The God we serve is on duty 24 7. He's watching you. He's not like he would doze off and something will happen to you. No, that's not the God we serve. We serve a God who is mindful of us. No wonder the scripture says, What is man that you are mindful of him? What is man that you pay attention to him? What is man that you, you, you know, he is forever on your mind. What an awesome thing. 
I want you to tell yourself I'm forever on God's mind. He sees me always. So when you are down and out, when you are in that valley, oh, David was a man that understood that. When he said in Psalm 23, he said, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I fear no evil because of what? For you are with me. You are with me. And this was not a dispensation of the Holy Spirit, but he had an understanding that this God is always there. He, he sees me. He sees. Let's look at Psalm 121. Verse 3 says, he will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, let me see. Pay attention. Let it resonate with him. Let it stay on the inside of you. He said, behold, you have to see it. A lot of times the problem is that we don't see it. We see what is happening. We see what we are being used to. We see what the doctrines of men are giving us. We see what religion has presented to us. But the word of God said, behold, see this morning. See, he who keeps you. Put your name there. He who keeps fire, Kemi, shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is watching over you. The Lord is watching over me. The Lord sees us. The Lord will never sleep. <laughs> you know, when, is, when Elijah wanted to mock the prophet of Baal, he said, call on him, call on him, maybe he's sleeping. Call on him, maybe he went on vacation. And sometimes... Sadly so, believers, we call on our God as if he's sleeping, as if he's taking a nap. We call on our God as if he's gone on vacation. But the scripture says, he who watches over you does not sleep. He does not slumber. The Lord is aware. Tell yourself this morning, the Lord is aware. He sees me because he is Jehovah El-Rohi. He sees me. Can we say that? Can that really resonate? He sees me. He's aware of where I am. He's not, God is not limited by our geographical location. He is the one that created the universe. The scripture says the heavens belong to him. The earth he has given to us, but this one father he has given it to us, he's still watching over us. God is not too busy to pay attention to you. Let's look at the scripture in 2 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 9. The Bible says, For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth. Why? To show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him. The eyes of God run to and fro. God is forever watching. God is forever looking. God is forever on assignment to show himself strong to you, to do you good. God is watching to do you good. I need to say that again and again. God is not the God of evil. God is not the God of confusion. God is not a bad God. He said in Jeremiah 29, 11, he said, for I, God, I know the thoughts that I have towards you, the thoughts of good and not of evil, to give you a hope, to give you a the future. I know my thoughts for you. My thoughts are good. And because his thoughts are good, when he looks at you, he's making all things work together for your good. The Lord is making all things work together for your good because his scripture cannot be broken. He said that in Romans 8, 28. Oh, you know, I love the way Paul said it. Paul wasn't guessing. Apostle Paul wasn't saying it like, okay, we are not sure. He said, for we know, <laughs> we are persuaded, we are so sure, beyond any shadow of doubt, and we know that all things, not just some things, not, not just part of our lives, all things, all, all work together for good to them that love God and are called according to his purpose. So this morning, Jehovah El-Rohi is revealing himself to us in that dimension. He's saying, my daughter, I see you. My son, I see you. The whispers, the things you cannot even articulate very well. Have you been in that situation? You want to pray, you don't even know how to put it together. You don't even know how to put it together. Words fail you. 
You have no words. And you just look up and he sees you. He sees you. Oh, Father, we thank you because you are God that sees. You see us. You see us. You see the, the thoughts. You see. The scripture says, in the multitude of my thoughts within me, your word comforts my soul. In the multitude of my thoughts within me. Another verse says, in the multitude of the anxieties, the uncertainties, you see me, your word comes to me because he is Jehovah Elohim. You know, the beautiful thing is this. He doesn't just see. You know, sometimes you can see the need of someone and you don't have the ability to meet it. You see it. Most of us see things that are happening in the world and you just wish, oh, how I wish I had the capacity. How I wish I had the ability to do what we serve a God who does not just see, but has the ability to do it because he is almighty. He is a God that is able. He is a God that is powerful. He is able to do all things. The beautiful thing, the cherry on top of the fact that he's Jehovah Elohim, is that he sees and he does. Not just that he does what he wants to do, he not just he even does what you're praying for. He does exceedingly, abundantly, above what you can imagine. Ephesians 3.20. Above what you can imagine. God does much more. Ephesians 3.20, let's look at it together. Hallelujah. He said, now to him who is able to do exceedingly these are in superlatives these are in, you know mind-blowing words exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ask amplified says more than you can imagine so a lot of times you know you see to imagine and it's as if you're fantasizing is as if oh these things cannot come they are too good to be true but that thing that you even think is too good to be true jehovah el rohi is is ready he's more than ready to do much more than that more than your wildest imagination what are your dreams what are your expectations what are your goals what are your desires in life what are those things that you, you know when you think about you say how can this be you ask like mary well how can this be they look so mind you know they look so so mind-blowing what is ready to blow your mind a songwriter says you blow my mind away Jesus, you blow my mind away, oh, mind away, mind away. Jesus, you blow my mind away. He blows our mind because he's Jehovah Elohim. That was what he did for Hagar in Genesis chapter 16. He blew her mind. This was somebody that was even in the wrong. He said, now I've seen the world who sees me. Can I tell you the good news? He sees you. He is Jehovah Elrohi. First Peter chapter three, verse 12 says, for the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are open to their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous. Have you given your heart to him? Do you love him? Are you a child of God? Then be sure that his eyes are on you. But maybe you're listening to me and you're like, oh, my, I'm not righteous. I have not given my heart to him. It's never too late. This is the day of salvation. When you hear as you're hearing now, harden not your heart. How do I give my heart to Jesus? Submit to him completely. Invite him as the Lord of your life. Invite him as your savior. Let him come in. Let him be the Lord. Can we do that before I continue? Lord, we thank you for as many that are listening to me this morning that have not become your children because the scripture says your eyes are the righteous and you said we are your righteousness in Christ Jesus. So it's in Christ Jesus that we are made righteous. So as many that are not in Christ, but they want to give their hearts to you, we come in agreement with them this morning and we say, Lord, have mercy. Forgive them all their sins. Wash them with the blood of Jesus. Let their names be written in the book of life. 
And Lord, hold them by the hand. Lead them in this beautiful journey. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have given your heart to the Lord, I want to say congratulations to you. Welcome to the family of Christ. And please get your Bible and start studying. Start studying the word of God. Get to know him. Get to know him personally. Let him reveal himself to you in a new way. He revealed himself to people and the scriptures. And that's why we use these names. When we're worshiping God, Jehovah el Rohi, Jehovah Shama, Jehovah Rapha, the Lord reveals. I have my beautiful revelation of God's names. He's the one that walks the journey of my life with me. Yes. Gave me that in my native language years ago. The one that walks the journey of your life with you. Wow. It's mind blowing, right? When you know that God is on the God is with you. God is in charge of the journey. When you know that God is with you in the midst of those storms, God is with you in your boat. Mm -hmm. You can be sure the boat cannot capsize. No, no. He's a covenant keeping God. What is the name of God? What is his revelation to you? Who do you call him? As we look at his names this morning, the names he had revealed himself to, I want you to desire that he reveals himself to you too in a unique way. You know, one of the wonderful things about Christianity is that it's a unique journey. It's about relationship. It's about God being personal with you. It's about God being personal. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let me quickly run to my second, the first, the first favorite. This is the second favorite I just talked about. So we're going to look at God's word, which says he's our Abba Father. Is Abba, God is our Father. This is the name Jesus came to introduce him to us by. Jesus came and gave us the name Father. In the Old Testament, he wasn't a father. But because of the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, he became our father. When we give our hearts to Christ, we have the spirit of adoption by which we can call out Abba, Father. Romans chapter 8. Oh, Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. When you understand the fatherhood of God, everything changes. When you understand the fatherhood of God, when you see God, not just, it's no longer just a name. When God reveals himself to you as your daddy, he changes everything. He changes the way you look at life. He changes your relationship with him. He changes your disposition to literally everything. Romans chapter 8, verse, let's, okay, let's start from 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. As many includes everybody. God cannot say, no, these children, I have too many children. I can no longer handle them. No. Uh, you know, his names are so interwoven. He is a El Shaddai God, the many-breasted God. So everybody, God has got provision for every one of us. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage and gain to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if we're children, then he is, he is of God and joined here with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together as many that have been have received him, as many that are led by the spirit of God, we are the sons of God. You can call on your daddy. You can call on God. The scripture says, if the fathers of this earth who are evil, if they know how to give good things to their children, how much more your heavenly father? Do you know what it is for God to be your daddy? The one that created the heavens and the earth. He is your daddy. The one one that has a cattle upon a thousand hills. He is your daddy. The one that sells silver and gold and mine. He is your daddy. That means you cannot be, you cannot be in lack. The one that does not sleep, no slumber. He is your father. Nothing can happen to you. Nothing can catch him by surprise. He's got you covered. He's got your back. 
God has got you covered on every side because he is a good father. When you say God is your father, oh, you have all that he has. That's why the scripture says, the spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. If children, then he is. Here are the people that are entitled to the throne. We are kings. We are royalties. We are wonderful people because we, we have God as our father. Let's look at it. Royalties on earth. See the way they carry themselves because they understand that they are royalties. They understand the family they belong to. When we say God is our father, you understand that you belong to the family of God. You belong to God. When he's your daddy, you cannot be held by whatever held your parents. Hey, Calibro Shatayaraba, what held your parents can no longer hold you. What plagued your generation is no longer permitted to plague you because you belong to a new generation. Because because you belong to a new lineage, because you belong to a new family. You have been named with the name of God. Now, when you say God is your daddy, your son name is, is God's name. That is the lineage you belong to. You cannot be held by a curse. No generational curse is permitted because in God, there is no generational curse. In God, there is no generational problem. In God, there is no negativity. In God, there is no curse. In God, there is no evil. In God, is, in, there is no unrighteousness. In God, there is no, there is no iniquity. In God, all things are good. In God, all things are made pure. In God, all things are perfect. And when you are God's own, you carry his DNA. If he's your daddy, that means you have his DNA. That means his blood runs through your veins. Are we understanding this this morning? That's so when you cry, Abba, Father, you are crying with understanding. You are crying with, with, with revelation. You know he is your daddy. You carry his nature. That's why First John says, whoever is born of God does not sin. Whoever is born of God does not make a practice of sin. When he's your father, you live holy. You live righteous. You live like he lives because his nature has been imp said unto you, his nature, his DNA has been put on the inside of you. You carry his genes. You carry the genes of the almighty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We talk about, oh, you know, it's not easy. We are all just human beings. We are flesh. We are this. We are prone to this. We are prone to that. Hey, the scripture says God is our father. If it is your father, if he is your father, you have his nature. You have his nature, so you have you have been given the ability to be like him, to act like him, to see like him, to do things like him. That's why Acts 10, 38 talked about Jesus. He said how the Lord God anointed Jesus Christ with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good because the Lord was with him. So when God is your daddy, you carry his nature, you begin to go every everywhere doing good doing good jesus said i am the light of the world and he said you are the light of the world what does that tell us we carry the same nature as christ he said that which i see my father do that is what i do that which i see my father say that is what i say every believer that understands that god is Abba, God is our daddy. This should be our disposition. This should be the way we live our lives. That which my father does, that is what I do. That which my father says, that is what I say. I am in union with him. My life is so infused. That's why first John, you know, we call that scripture. 
we want to talk about the devil. We quote First John 4, 4, say, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Yes, because your daddy is on the inside of you, because he has given you his nature, because he has given you the spirit as a seal of promise. Then you go forth and you begin to act like him. You begin to talk like him. You begin to see like him. Hallelujah. You know, I was looking at the place in Acts of Apostles yesterday. And he came alive again. Let me look for it and read it to us. Lord, we bless you. We bless you. When they were talking, you know, chapter four. Acts of Apostles chapter four, verse 13. When Peter and John had been arrested for healing the man at the gate called Beautiful and all that, and he called them. We know the story. Verse 13 says, now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men, they marveled and they realized that they had been with Jesus. They realized that these men had been with who? who? With Jesus. So whatever was their qualification before they met the Lord did not count anymore. Hi, did you hear that? Their qualification according to human standard, your background according to human standard, the things you've been through according to the human standard, what happened in your lineage according to the flesh does not count anymore. Because you have God as your father, as your father. The disciples noticed something different with Jesus in his relationship, in his communication. And they said, teach us how to pray. Teach us how to do it the way you do it. Teach us how to have this, this, this relationship. Teach us how to make it real. Teach us how to make it, you know, to go beyond religion. Teach us how to go beyond routine. Teach us how prayer goes beyond tradition. Teach us how prayer goes beyond what we are told to do because God will be happy. Teach us how you do it. And he said, when you pray, pray like this. Our father relationship, our daddy. God is your daddy. God is your father. And whatever that, I pray that the Lord will give us understanding of what that means. It's, it's unfolding his all encompassing. Who is God? Who is God to you? the God of the heavens and the earth, the one that has a thousand cattle, the one that is able to do all things, the one that knows all things, the one that sees all things. <laughs> if this God is, if, if this all in all God, you know, for me, the Abba Father sums up all God's name. If this all in all God, the one who is Jehovah Rapha, the Lord our healer, the one who is Jehovah Shammah, the Lord that is ever present, the one who is El Shaddai, the all sufficient God, the, the, the one who is Jehovah Sabbath, the Lord that fight our battle, this God that has these many names and many identities and many capacities, many capabilities. Ah, this God that can do this, all these things, he is my God. I'm sorted. I'm sorted. And I want you to, to see it like that this morning. That if this God is your daddy, you are sorted. You can go through the true life with your head raised. You can walk with your shoulders high. You can walk with joy. That is where joy comes from. That's when you're not moved by anything. Because you just know. It's like children in the house. They don't think about how to prepare school fees. They don't think about how to eat. They don't think about how, nothing. <laughs> Have you seen, the, babies just turn to their mothers. Ah, they cry. The, the meaning is figure it out. Figure, Lord, mother, what I need right now. And the mother figures it out. <laughs> and, to the baby. The father pays it, the pay school fees, they do this. They, if earthly fathers know how to give those things to their children, 
How much more? How much more, God? How much more? A songwriter says, if he clothes the lily with beauty and splendor, how much more will he clothe you? Jesus said, if the birds of the air, they don't spin, they don't do anything, they do no work, and they don't go hungry. The sparrows, are you no what more than sparrow? Are you no what more than sparrow? The lilies of the field, they are beautiful. He says, he said, not even Solomon in his beauty, in his splendor, could match up to the, to the lilies. He said, how much more? How much more? I want us to live here this morning knowing that we serve Jehovah Elohim, the God that sees us, the God that sees and settles us. And I want you to know, that above all, this God is your father. Some have very nasty relationship with their earthly fathers and it has colored, that's what I, the Spirit of God is telling me now. It has colored even your understanding of who God is. You can't really relate because your earthly father has not been there or has, is not doing what he's supposed to do. Father, I pray this morning for as many, oh God, that are struggling because of the negative experiences they've had with their earthly fathers. Lord, I pray, Father, this morning that you open their eyes. Let their eyes of understanding be flooded with light. Let the revelation of you as Abba, Father, dawn on everyone. Let the revelation of you as God Come alive, oh God, in the hearts of everyone so that we can embrace her, this beautiful provision that be made for us so that we can leave this altar, all of us together. We pray for fresh revelation for every one of us, oh God, to see you as daddy and to understand what that means, to walk in that consciousness, to live in that reality every day of our lives. We give you all the glory. We thank you for your word this morning. We run with this word, oh God. We go in the strength of this word and we profit with it. Father, we say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for revealing yourself to us. We give you all the glory. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. I greet our Lord. Facebook audience again. I see a lot of people on the on the platform this morning. God bless you all. God bless you. Thank you so much for joining. Mama Virginia, God bless you. Bola, thank you. Mommy, thank you. Professor